Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith. Recently we've been discussing earthly riches and concluded that it's not necessarily immoral to be rich, but that wealth and comfort can distract people from their obligation to do what's right. Today, what about the rich people who Jesus met? I would say that both Herod and Pilate fall into the category of people who allowed their wealth to distract them from their moral obligations. Caiaphas may have been another example of that, but his words in John 11.50 also seem to indicate a person whose concerns were being distracted by governments and political planning, by power as much as by wealth, if not more so. In Matthew 19, Jesus meets a rich boy with many possessions who asks him what he needs to do to enter the kingdom of heaven. Luke 18 tells a similar story about some nameless leader. This could have been a reference to the same person, however, since Luke's account is almost totally devoid of details. In reply to his question, Jesus gave this answer. Jesus saith to him, If thou wilt be perfect, go sell what thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. Matthew 19.21 Some people, both Christians and non-Christians alike, have heard this story, and assume that it means that all Christians must give up all their possessions. However, firstly, that's not true. This was not a general command to all Christians. Secondly, it wasn't even a command to this one person. According to Jesus, this was what the boy needed in order to be perfect. The fact that the boy then walked away indicates that he attached more value to his earthly goods than to heavenly rewards, so we can see why Jesus would use this as the final obstacle for him. However, not everyone has this difficulty of being unwilling to part with their goods for the sake of Jesus and the benefit of others. Lazarus, who Jesus raised from the dead, was both a rich man and a generous one. We know he was rich because he had a tomb with a stone over the entrance, a rare thing in those times, reserved only for the very wealthy, like the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees. Yet, in spite of his wealth, he was a good friend of Jesus, so much so that Jesus wept over his death. Zacchaeus, the tax collector, was incredibly rich, but when Jesus called him, he freely offered to pay back all the people he'd cheated and gave a huge sum to the poor. He also was rich, and he also was generous, so not all rich people are slaves to their riches and unable to part with them. Because of this, in Luke 19.9, Jesus said that salvation had come to his house. In fact, just recognizing the true nature of God's commandments and their importance is only a couple steps away from salvation. One time, while Jesus was teaching, one of the scribes was impressed with his wisdom and asked him to explain the first of all the commandments. In response, Jesus explained that the most important was to love God fully, and the second to love your neighbor as yourself. When the scribe complimented Jesus on the accuracy of his answer, Jesus said in Mark 12:34 that he was not far from the kingdom of God. They say that money can't buy happiness, and it's true. However, another thing that money can't buy is heaven. Being rich won't get you into heaven. However, as these very different types of stories indicate, it won't necessarily keep you out of heaven either. It's not money that chains souls, but how easy it is for people to be distracted by it and forget what's really important. Money or not, goodness is still goodness, and evil doing is still evil doing. Next, are there rich saints? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.